Today, we are at the Child Rights Center of Batumi Shota Rustavelli State University. And from here, we will discuss the subject of family environment for children and family alternative care arrangements for children without family support. The Convention on the Rights of the Child, adopted in 1989 by the UN General Assembly, revolved the all the rights of children around the family. In the 70s, when the concept of child rights was becoming clearer, and when the advocacy for child rights was becoming stronger, and then from 1979 to 1989, during the 10 years drafting process of the Convention on the Rights of the Child, there were many fears that child rights and a stronger culture of child rights may diminish the rights of parents. At the same time, even teachers were worried that stronger child rights may diminish their rights. But on the contrary, the Convention on the Rights of the Child strengthened the family and kept the family as the cornerstone, st cornerstone in the society. Article 5 of the Convention on the Rights of the Child confirmed the rights of parents and the obligation of parents to bring up their children. But at the same time, the Convention recognizes fully that parents should respect the rights of their children. So the environment created by the Convention on the Rights of the Child is a conducive one to a child growing up with rights, to a child growing up without violence, to a child growing up to the fullest capacity. And this is where the theory of evolving capacities of children comes in. Needless to say, that the four general principles of the Convention that we discussed in an earlier session apply completely and fully to the family environment that every child should enjoy. So parents should not discriminate between their children. Parents should also respect not only the right to survival, not only the right to life, but also the right to development, which is a quality life for every child. Parents also should respect the principle of the best interest of the child, and they should learn how to achieve the best interest of every child of their children. Participation is the other key component, key parameter, of children's rights, and parents should apply it all the time, everywhere and anywhere. And children, by learning how to apply the right to participation in the family, they become better citizens even, and they contribute to a stronger democracy in their societies. So the rights of parents in upbringing their children is enshrined and respected by the Convention. Moreover, the Convention makes it clear that the state cannot interfere unless the parents are breaching the rights of their children. Because when the state interferes too much, this becomes a way of a totalitarian system, totalitarian approach, where the state decides how the children should grow up, what should the children should study, and how, what their orientation should be. So the Convention preserves the right of parental guidance to the parents. At the same time, children's rights in the modern concept means that children should be protected all the time and any time 
when their rights are not respected. The principle of interference in the family affairs to protect a child was not possible before the Convention on the Rights of the Child was adopted because the protection was all the time coming through the family and that's why in from 1979 which was the international year of the child as per the resolution of the United Nations Children of the United Nations General Assembly since 1979 countries started preparing child centered statistics and surveys and studies concentrated on children's protection. So we came to understand that the child is not always protected within the family, unfortunately. There are times where the state has to intervene to fix a situation, but also from a social work concept, from a progressive social work concept, whenever there is a problem in the family, the intervention should aim at fixing the problem within the family without separating the family and without creating more problems to the family. And this is where the concept of proactive social work comes in, where the specialized agencies, specialized social work agencies intervene proactively to resolve problems so children stay within the family and problems are solved out within the family. There are sometimes, very unfortunately, cases where the child becomes at risk and at serious risk. And this is where progressive laws allow to separate the child for some time from the parents until the problem is fixed. Having said this, we have also to think of those children who are deprived from a biological family or whose families have gone into problems and the child had to be separated for some time or the parents have abandoned the child or any situation in which the child becomes without family support. And the Convention on the Rights of the Child is very clear that in case the family initial family environment is not possible, is not available, then a family alternative care should be provided. Adoption, for instance, is a very good solution for the child to grow up in a family environment. Foster families are also a family alternative care where a child grows up within a family environment. Having said this, it should be noted that large-scale institutions are not an option at all and are not compliant with children's rights. That's why globally, everywhere, all large-scale institutions where children are residing should send back children to their families. And the priority is to send back the children to biological families because the experience and the studies and the surveys show that many children who reside in institutions do have, unfortunately, biological families. But they were sent to the institutions either because of poverty or because of social problems in the family. But this is not compliant at all with child rights. Another type is what we call the small-scale family type institutions where only few children are there and the caregivers in this small-scale family type institution are specialized and are qualified to provide services and to care for these children. But this should always be a measure of last resort. And in all cases, any type of placement of a child 
in a family type institution should be for limited period of time for the shortest period of time so such small scale family type institution serves as a transitional support for the child to go back to a family. Also we have seen in many countries, in many places, boarding schools acting as boarding schools but in reality they are child institutions and this is again a violation of children's rights. These boarding schools should send back the children to their families and such boarding schools have children who have families at least by 80 or 90 percent of them but children were sent to these boarding schools because of poverty or because of social, social problems in the family. In a summary, in a nutshell, we know very well that the Convention on the Rights of the Child prioritizes the family and keeps the family as the cornerstone of the society. And a reference here can be made very well to the Code on the Rights of the Child of Georgia, which stipulates that the best interest of the child shall be defined primarily by the family according to the code and to the convention on the rights of the child which is ratified by Georgia. This means that the family, the parents are mainly the responsible ones for upbringing children, for building also a value system for, for their children. But at the same time, this should remain within the principles and the provisions of the Code on the Rights of the Child of Georgia and the Convention on the Rights of the Child. So if their practices, if any practice by the parents is not compliant with the Code or with the Convention, in this case, they would not be achieving the best interest of the child. Every child has the right to grow up in a family within a sound environment, no violence, and all the time contributing to full potentials of the child, enjoying the family environment, and contributing to the society within a, a participatory approach in the family which contributes to a more democratic society and to sound democratic practices in the country and this way children learn how to participate, learn how to resolve problems in a nonviolent way and teach the same to the next generations.